All right, so today we're going to be looking at doing a recording of how to actually save with App Inventor. And so we have our App Inventor object right here, and here on this quick little test app, we have our three major components that we have to use to save from a canvas. So as you can see over here on our components list, we have our save button, our drawing canvas, and our UI notifier. We're going to look at a couple different ways we can actually save that. So the components we have to have obviously right there, we will need obviously more to do the full actual application, but just to talk about saving, that's all we need to actually show right here. So to do that, we're gonna go over here onto the blocks tab, open that up, and we're gonna um, have over here, we have on our app, we have our save button, our drawing canvas and our UI notifier, again, those pieces we actually are using. The blocks are located over here on the left section in our screen one blocks. And what we wanna do is we wanna first go to our save button, and drag the dot click option off. Our dot click again is where we're gonna see what we're gonna have um, happen within our actual app itself. So in the save button dot click, I want to do this action. And so when I save from this, I wanna actually grab the image from the canvas and put that on. And so in order to do that, I have to do a couple different things. The first thing I'm gonna to need to do is I need to make sure I actually have some information on that. And so I'm gonna go over to my variables and I'm gonna grab a variable. We're gonna use the initialize global variable and the global variable in this case will be save count, like we said. And we'll initialize it to zero. And again, you did that, I did that by typing on the keyboard. It allowed me to actually put that block directly in there rather than finding it inside my math blocks. Nice little shortcut for that. So I've initialized global save count to zero. And when I click the button is what I want to do is I need to make sure that I'm going to grab the image that's inside my canvas and I want to save it. And so I'm going to go to my drawing canvas object and I scroll down to the methods that are part of that or the procedures that are part of that. And I'm gonna grab the option down here, which is called drawing canvas.saveas with a file name. And as you know right here, we have this plug, so I can't just drag it in to my save button. It, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so there are a couple options to do this. I'm going to show the first option with the um, ignore result, and then we'll do the second option where we can actually have that notifier show that for us. And so in the ignore result, I go to my control section, I grab the evaluate but ignore result, and I can plug that inside my save button dot click. I will then drag that block and plug it into here. And so now I have, when I click my button, I'm going to do the actions that are attached to this plug but don't care about the, what comes from it. And so in that case, I'm going to save it, but I don't care what comes back from it. And I'm going to do it, save it as file name. Now, if I simply just save it as a text, right here, like this, and I do my picture from, um, from my app, .jpg. I save that picture as my picture from my app.jpg, and it will overwrite that image every single time. That's a problem. So what we need to do instead is I'm gonna drag that out, go back to my text and grab the join tool. My picture from my app.jpg, probably not the best one right there now, so I'm gonna take this off of that, my picture. And I'm gonna go over to join and I'm gonna drag a third string onto that. So I have joined three strings so I have my picture, socket, socket. In the second socket, I'm gonna go up here to the save count and grab the get global save count and put it right there. And then for the final socket, grab a blank text, plug it in there, and in there, type in .jpg. You need to make sure you give your image saving an extension. Otherwise, it'll just save a file. And that doesn't help anyone. So you need to make sure you save it as the right type. In this case, it's a JPEG, so we'll save it as a JPEG. And so this will save my picture, zero, dot JPEG. And again, right now, it's still gonna save everything as that picture. But we wanna make it so that when I click the button, it'll change and it'll update. And so do that, I go back up to my save count, hover over it. I grab the set global save count, plug it underneath. I then go over to my math, grab a plus option. I put it in here. And in the first one, I'm gonna go to save count and get a save count again. 
And in the second box, I'm going to plug a 1 into it. So I'll add 1 to my variable every time I click the button. So it'll start off at 0, go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 billion. So it'll keep on adding to that over and over again. So every time I save now, my new image will be saved to my drive. And so I'll have access to it that I can actually save it and get access to it. So that is the first thing we want to look at. And so that's the one where I don't notify the user. If, however, I want to actually notify the user that this has been saved, that's where I'll be using my UI notifier. And on this one, I could simply just call right here. I could do the show alert on that. And I'd copy this. And I'd call my UI notifier dot show alert. And that would be then the same thing. It's going to also say that I saved that picture as that. And that one would save it again a second time because I have two save it the same name. So probably not the best idea. You only need to do one of these two, either evaluate but ignore result or show alert with that notice. One of the two is a good choice. Both of them, not a good choice. If you want to save it and then notify them that, hey, your picture is saved, you could do that. But you only need to do this call once. The save file name as only happens once to save that.